Welcome to Regis Algebra 2. This is Lesson 31b. We're going to begin with a scripture, and this is a beautiful passage in Psalm 94, 19. It says, When the cares of my heart are many, your consolations cheer my soul. Now, cares of my heart, that would be anything that concerns me, anything that causes me distress or uh, stresses me or bothers me, or worries me, or or fears I have, whatever it would be. And, and notice it says when. It's not if. We know that life is full of many, many, many concerns. And so when these things happen, if we take them to the Lord, we pray about them, they, we put them in his hand. It says, your consolations, Lord cheer my soul. So when we give our cares and concerns to the Lord, he brings to us peace and joy. It is the peace. It's supernatural. It really is because the rational mind would say, I should not be feeling peace in this situation. I should not have. It cheers my soul. It lifts my soul. I should not be feeling lifted up or encouraged in the midst of all that I'm going through right now or all that's happening in the world or in my own family or in my relationships or in my internal heart. All those things should not be making me feel peace and joy. And yet the Lord will give us that when we ask him to. In fact, the scripture calls it the peace that passes all understanding. And no wonder, because it hardly makes sense that we could feel as steady as we do in the midst of life's circumstances. But so that's a wonderful promise, and I would encourage you to turn it into a prayer. Even pause just now. What is my care? What is my concern? What is stirring me up? Lord, I give it to you. I ask that you would instead fill me with your peace in the midst of whatever concerns me, because I am confident in who you are, and that you are in control. Thank you. Amen. Now we're going to go ahead and look today at your answers for 9.2 and review some of the problems and techniques and move on to 9.3. Most of these will be able to just read our answers orally. And then we'll go back and review the idea. Okay, R equals plus or minus 2. Next, X equals plus or minus 3. Next, S equals plus or minus 4. Next, S equals plus or minus I square root of 5. F number 5, Z equals plus or minus I. Next, P equals plus or minus one-eighth. Next, S equals plus or minus six. Next, X equals plus or minus four. Number nine, M equals plus or minus four, the square root of two. N equals plus or minus I, the square root of three. X equals plus or minus four. M equals plus or minus two, the square root of two. Number 13, x equals plus or minus 7. r equals plus or minus 2, the square root of 5. x equals plus or minus 2i, the square root of 2. k equals plus or minus 2i, the square root of 3. Number 17, x equals plus or minus 2, the square root of 5. Next, y equals plus or minus 3. Moving down to the word problems, your equation on number 24 should be x squared plus 25 equals 13 squared. And so your answer, that's squared. Should be plus or minus 12. Let me read that problem. If 25 is added to the square of a certain number, there's the square of a certain number, there's adding 25. 
the sum is equal to the square of 13. There's the square of 13. There, yeah, mm -hmm. so that's it. 25 says when 5 is taken away from a certain number and also added to it, the product of these multiplying them together, is 75. So there's my equation. When you solve it, the answer should be plus or minus 10. Moving on to 26 through 29. Hmm. Okay, before we do that, let me go back and show you a few examples because I'm going to actually teach this last concept. I need to teach that. I left that off. You probably wondered. <laughs> so I'm just going to review a few. I'm going to review um, three of these, that's all. Okay, so we're going to multiply the other side by 4. And we're going to take the square root and the square root of 32 is going to be 16 times 2. And so this will become plus or minus 4, the square root of 2. Let's look at number 13. We're going to simply do what we normally do when we're solving problems. We'll take the x's to the left and the numbers to the right. We're going to get 2x squared equals, subtract out 25, and that'll be 98. I'll divide by 2. And that'll be 49. I'll take the square root of both sides, and we get plus or minus 7. For number 15, I'll FOIL on the left, I'll distribute on the right here, and then I'll gather like terms. Notice when you have the same thing on the left and the right, you just want to cancel that out. I'll pull my x's to the left and my number to the right. Just recall when we're at this stage here, we're taking the square root of a negative, so that would be i, and 8, the square root of 8, simplifies to 2, the square root of 2. We typically write the constant before the i. Now, I would like to teach through the next idea on page 221, which is a little bit left over from this same section before I go on to 9.3. Uh, now it says, solve the inequality and graph on a number line. Now this is a review for us. We, if we have 2x squared minus 8 is greater than or equal to, that's the inequality. And recall our only rule that separates inequalities from equalities is that if you multiply or divide by a negative number, you must flip the inequality. So this becomes, if we divide by 2, we get x squared minus 4 is greater than or equal to 0. And then we're going to go ahead, take the 4 to the right side. We're adding and subtracting, so we don't we leave our inequality the same. Whoops. So squared is greater than or equal to 0. Take the square, I'm sorry, we're really taking the 4 over. There we go. Greater than or equal to 4. Take the square root of both sides and x is greater than or equal to the square root of 4 plus or minus 2. Now what does that mean when we try to graph this? If we have 0 and we have plus 2 over here and minus 2 over here, we're saying what? That it's greater than, so greater than or equal to. So there's my point and it has to be to the right of that, to be greater than or equal to. On this side, if this is my point, it's negative 2, 
and the x has to be Okay, now this is the part that's kind of new. So what we'll do is we'll plot them as equal, right? X equals plus or minus 2. So those are my two points. Or if it would just be without an equal, we just put them as open circles. And now we test. Okay, let's go back to our original equation. If it's 3, I'd have... 9 times 2 is 18 minus 8. Is that greater than or equal to? Yes. So I want to include that. So I shade there. What about something in the middle here? If I put a 0 in my original equation, I'd get 2 times 0 is 0 minus 8. Is negative 8 greater than or equal to? No. So I don't shade the middle. So I'm testing three times, three tests, okay, to figure out where the shading is. Okay by taking random values in the three intervals. The third interval is over here to the left of the first point. And let's say I'll take negative 3. Negative 3 squared is 9. 18 minus 8 is greater than. So I would want to share this, a uh, shade this interval. So my final answer is, because they're separated from one another, I can say x is greater than or equal to 2, or x is less than or equal to negative 2. And that's my answer. Let's go ahead and look at the next um, problem. Again, we're going to say uh, 2x squared plus 4x squared is less than or equal to 6. We'll gather our like terms. We'll divide by 6. We'll take the square root. Okay. And then, I'm sorry. We better leave that. Now, we have to plot our two points. There's my 0. There's my 1. There's my negative 1. And now I'll test my three sections. What? To the original problem. I'll take 2. So we've got 4 times 2 is 8. Well, no, I'll... I'll Take it right here. It'll just be easier. Okay. Okay. So let's take the number 2. I've got 2 squared is 4. 4 times um, four times 6 is 24. Is 24 less than or equal to 6? No. So I do not shade. In the middle... Let's take 0. I'm going to have 0 times 6, or 0 is less than or equal to 6. Yes. So I will shade. And finally, I'll take a negative 2. That'll be 4 times 6, 24. No, it's not less than or equal to 6. So you must do this. You must do this step. To figure this out. So what's my answer here? X is between. So I can write it this way. It's less than or equal to 1 and greater than or equal to negative 1. See how this differs here? Here I can write it as a combination statement, but up here, when it's when they're where they they're not the sharing the distance between them, but they're on the extremes. It has to be two statements with an or. Let me do another problem on the next page. We'll go over this a little bit quicker now. Notice on this problem in 28, I'm leaving an open circle because I don't have less than or equal to, I just have less than. So we'll test our three step um, areas now. 
So I think that probably gives you enough practice. Now let's go ahead and do 9.3, our new concept. That was a new concept, but we'll go ahead and do. So I'm not giving you practice problems for this, but make sure you know how to do that so you can review that. Okay. To make sure you would know how to do that on a test or a quiz. All right, let's go to the new concept. Now this is solving by uh, quadratic equations by factoring. You've done lots of this. This is really just a review idea for you, so I'm just going to simply let you do a lot of review because it isn't always a very easy idea for students, so it needs a lot of review. But I'll just uh, simply demonstrate and talk you through a few problems because there's nothing new being taught here. Don't forget to set it to zero, the equation to zero. Okay, we're going to set it to zero, and then we're going to factor. Thinking to myself, two numbers that multiply together to give me 12, and their sum, because it's a positive, they'll have the same sign, their sum will be 7. So that would be 3 and 4. Foil back to make sure it worked, please. Okay, And so your answers will be setting each part to zero. Right. Okay, very similar problem here, but now we want two numbers multiply together to give me 12. They're the same sign, so their sum will be negative 7. So now it would just be y minus 3 and y minus 4. Why? Because if I foiled it back, first terms would be y squared, outer and inner would be minus 4y, minus 3y, that will give me my minus 7y, and multiplied together will give me positive 12. Always foil back to make sure. Now this time, when you set each one to zero, by that I mean you're saying y minus 3 equals zero. What does y must, y must be 3 or 4? I'm going to give you just a few more review problems. Again, there's nothing new about this, just reminding you. Let's take 3x squared. I believe I did this, actually, as I demonstrated Maybe I didn't. I'm trying to remember why I would have. Maybe when I demonstrated it to begin with. Don't forget to set it to zero, and then we'll factor out a common factor. Now, when we have an inequality here, okay, um, go ahead and divide this into your three portions. We're going to have an open circle. Okay, it's, it's really um, not equal, right? But we're going to pretend that it's an equal sign to get this stuff. And we've got our three sections and figure out where your shading will be. And then go ahead and write your answer accordingly. X is going to be greater than. 3 or x will be less than negative 4. Okay, I think that's enough for you. Right now, let's talk about what your homework will need to be. Your homework will simply be this lesson 9.3, 1 through 30 all, getting good practice with that factoring to recall it. We will be sending you a quiz by email and you will mail it back to us. Now last lesson 31a I went over the homework that must be mailed by Friday. This is not included in that. So take this in a closed book environment, staple it shut, have your parents sign it and you will not be required to mail this until I tell you about the next bundle to mail. Okay so Make sure that the other stuff is mailed by Friday. Now, if you happen to get it finished and you want to include it, that's fine. But 
Uh, it's not required to mail this yet. Just keep it handy because we don't want you to have to mail every single week. All right. God bless.